Hi guys, this is the new SP Racing F3 mini board which is out now. Main features include micro SD card socket for black box logging, F3 processor, USB port with three serial ports on there, uh, none of which are shared with the USB so they're all dedicated. You've got an onboard voltage regulator so you plug a uh, two to five cell battery straight in. You've got a race transponder which transmits a code as you fly around the track. So basically you just turn up on race day put one of these in and away you go. Basically you don't have to flap about with getting a uh, transponder fitted into your quad and fiddling about with wires and so on. As long as they're using an ILAP compatible receiver you're good to go. It's got buttons on the side of it which you can use for resetting the firmware, entering bootloader mode and binding spectrum satellite receivers and potentially other uses later on like changing LED colours and things like that. Um, it's got the latest F3 processor, the M MPU9250 uh, gyro, accelerometer and mag. Underneath you've got a BMP280 uh, which is the barometer so if you're using GPS position hold or the navigation functionality which is in the iNav fork at the moment which will be merged back into CleanFlight soon uh, then this board is perfect for that. Uh, you can connect up external GPS receivers via uh, the UART2 and the I2C socket for an external mag if you want an external mag. You've got uh, current monitoring, RSSI monitoring inputs uh, you've got PWM RSI and analog RSSI. You've got eight PWM outputs, four at the bottom, two over here, two over here. The three serial ports are located here if you're using an S bus receiver. Uh, basically, you use the ground of five volts and the receive pin of UART1, which is where this is now. Uh, UART2 is available on the JST SH socket underneath the board and the T pin, which if you use uh, the smart port telemetry or the FR Sky telemetry, is also broken out onto this white pin over here. So basically, you don't need to use the JST SH sockets unless you're using like GPS stuff and things like that. Uh, you basically use the through hole stuff, which people find more durable in the field, uh, especially in the crash. Um, you've got an LED output on the blue pin. Um, the other serial port is at the top over here, which is uh, UART3, so where you've got T and R here, that's the transmit and receive pins. If you use a Spectrum satellite receiver, then you basically will be using UART3 up in the corner, and you can also install a JST ZH socket, which is a, one of the through hole ones, which basically goes in the board like that, and you solder it underneath here. Uh, and that allows you to plug a spectrum satellite directly in there. And you can use the B button uh, when you power the board on to do the binding of the spectrum satellite receiver. Uh, don't forget to configure the, um, the actual mode that you want the spectrum satellite in first before you do that. Uh, details of that are in the clean flight manual. Uh, we have the race transponder, as I mentioned on the bottom. So basically it's got two LEDs, so you can either position them like that, you can break off the transponder board and, and reattach it to the main board using the pads underneath. Uh, there's an enable jumper on the bottom which you must enable first for the transponder to work. Don't forget that. Uh, don't forget to configure it in the clean flight software as well. Uh, each board comes with a unique transponder code uh, and a QR code. And you scan that in and then basically you go onto the website and you get your data. And then you go into the clean flight configurator and enter your data in and then your transponder will work. Uh, by default, it will just transmit a, a, a code which uh, the INAP receivers will ignore. As I mentioned earlier, one of the new features of this board is the micro SD card socket. And you can insert uh, up to a 32 gig card in there. You can insert a micro SD or a micro SD HC. It's not compatible with the micro SD XC at the moment. That may happen later in the future, but not yet. Um, a, good, a good size card to start with is a 4 gig card. Um, so you don't have to worry about you know downloading and it taking ages through the configurator your logs. You basically pop the card out, plug it in your computer, and you can read the data straight off it without having to wait ages. So basically, it means tuning your quad is a bit easier because you have to wait less time before you can analyse the results each time. So basically, you're more likely to spend more time tuning it and getting a better result out of it. Um, use a good quality card as well. You need a good card. Um, because the data rate to record all your logging data to the card needs to be fast. Uh, some cheaper cards don't have as much internal uh, buffers and so on, so they can't write to the card quite as quick. 
Uh, it's not specific to the class rating. Uh, each of the manufacturers don't really publish details on how they actually store the data to the card. And occasionally there's large pauses uh, between writing blocks of data. So you have to make sure you get a good quality card from a good manufacturer. Uh, we haven't had any issues with the SanDisk um, HC cards at the moment. They've been pretty good. Um, but uh, equally I've been using uh, an old 2 gig one out of an old Android phone and that's been absolutely fine as well. Um, but but stay with the good ones, the branded ones, so you know what you're getting. Uh, we'll endeavour to get a uh, list of ones that work in the CleanFact manual. So if you're using a micro SD card and it works for you, give us the details of it and we'll add them to the manual. So micro SD card socket for your logging so you can tune it. So as I mentioned earlier, it's a mini board, but judging from the size of the PTV, you're probably thinking that's not very really mini. Uh, it's giant, it's bigger than the normal boards. Well, that's because all the little ears on these boards actually break off. So each of the corners break off, the button panel breaks off, the connector over here, the debug port breaks off, uh, the clean fact logo breaks off, and the transponder section breaks off. When they're all broken off, you get a board that looks like this. So basically all the important signals are still on the main section of the board. Uh, you only lose basically the ground and the 5 volt outputs for the PWM 5, 6, 7 and 8 because they're still on the little ears that get broken off. Um, but there's 5 volts and ground elsewhere on the board so basically you can use those as well as the PWM output if you're using servos or extra motors and you want the mini version of the board. The, uh, the board measures about 36mm uh, lengthways by 24mm across. Um, and in this particular form, it's really good for putting in one of the little 180 size quads or even smaller because uh, you basically don't need the extra weight of the, um, the uh, mounting screws and things like that. Because you can actually mount the board to the chassis with some of the double sided tape. And basically, you can stick some double sided tape onto the bottom of the SD card socket. And the JST connectors here will actually double as feet for the board. So when you're putting the mounting the board in the quad, if you're using. Um, the pin headers. The pin headers actually won't poke through and hit the chassis that's underneath because they don't protrude down far enough. You can see that on this one here with my finger here. I don't know whether it's very easy to see, but the, the headers don't go down far enough. The pin headers also, sorry, the uh, JST SH socket's also recessed. So in a crash, basically, if something comes in from the side, it's not going to hit your cable, which might be sticking out from the edge of the board. It's actually going to hit the edge of the board first before it hits anything else. Um, so you're far less likely to break off these JST SH sockets with their current position that they're in uh, versus boards which have them on the edge of the board. Um, you can reattach the transponder section using either the four pins on the left hand side or the four pins on the right hand side of the board. The pairs of two pins in the middle of the board are for the LEDs to go in. Uh, there's details in the manual about which, which way around they go in. Uh, basically the long leg of the LED is the positive and that goes in the, the positive hole. So check the manual for the orientation there. Uh, so you can relocate this any way you like. So if the light isn't coming out cleanly out of the side of the uh, quad that you're mounting it in, then you might need to relocate it. So if you've got a quad like this and you've got one of the transponders in the middle, that's probably going to be fine because the light's going to come out and not be interrupted by the propellers or anything else, or the frame or anything. Uh, but if you had large props and they were obscuring the view from the LEDs, then you would want to relocate it. And you have a few options there. Obviously, you can turn the entire board round to, m to make it at the front or the back, uh, or you can break it off and relocate it. The transponder panel also has 36 mil it's 30.5mm uh, mounting holes, the width of the board is 36mm. It has these holes, so you can actually take this off and then stack it above the board and you can reconnect it to the main board by using three pins on, e on either side to reconnect that basically. And then that'll stack. Uh, so, that's, so the transponder panel is designed to be stacked as well as relocated. Uh, the transponder panel has an, an enable jumper, you can see it on this one here, it's unsoldered there. When it's soldered on, basically you just have a little dab of solder that connects both of those two together. Without that being soldered and without the clean flight software being configured, your transponder is not going to transmit anything. So make sure you do that before you try racing. Do it before race day, not on race day as well. Just going to show you a quick tip with regards to the uh, transponders and checking, making sure it's working before race day. 
Um, if you have a mobile phone, mobile phones have a camera in them, and the camera is generally pretty good at picking up infrared. And you can see on that one there, if you look at the phone, that the LED is flashing very briefly, and basically that means it's transmitting data. If you see the LEDs flashing like that, that means you've connected them up the right way round, and that CleanFlight is uh, sending data through the LEDs. You often need to angle the phone directly at the LEDs in order for you to see anything. Okay, there you go, quick tip done. Um, additionally on the board, there's a small jumper, point it with a little pen, over here. Uh, this jumper here, when bridged, will send the power from the, the 5 volt power from the voltage regulator to the 5 volt outputs on the board. Um, and it'll do that, and it won't do that, sorry, unless that is jumped. Uh, this allows you to basically use non-opto ESCs to power the board uh, without backfeeding through to the voltage regulator if you're using that instead of the voltage regulator. So the design is flexible there, but if you want the 5 volt outputs, don't forget to jump that little jumper there. Uh, be careful when you're doing it, it is quite small and there are some components near it. Uh, it's easy, much easier to do it before you install the pin headers because you've got cleaner access to it with your soldering iron. So if you're doing that, don't forget to do it first. Okay, enjoy.